Okay, and so today we are continuing uh, to see how to construct, how to build applications with JavaScript. Uh, last week, uh, we uh, more or less uh, uh, arrived to this point uh, where we saw how to use the mechanism, uh, how to combine some mechanisms of the, of the language, basically the closures. So remember we had a, a variable and we closed over the variable uh, with, the, with some function that uh, would survive after the end of the of the um, of the main function and we use that to emulate uh, objects uh, with state okay the classical objects uh, in, in java for example where, where you have some local state and you have some methods basically this can be emulated quite easily based based on closures and on functional expressions so that functions are normal variables and function may close uh, over uh, local uh, local valuable lo local objects. Okay, um, this is the basic mechanism. We are not going to use this because there will be more easier syntaxes to work. And I show you a couple of syntaxes that are easier right now, and then uh, once one more when we see the classes in JavaScript. But just to show you that you can do object-oriented programming without mentioning a class uh, just by using objects. Uh, basically, what we are doing here is creating objects that may modify some data. Um, there's also a variation of this pattern. Uh, we see that we defined a function and this function was used here to create a counter, create some objects, okay? Uh, there may be cases when a function it's only used once to create an object and then you don't need to create further objects of the same type. In this case, you can define the function and execute it immediately. You see, we have a function expression here that defines the function from here to there, okay? And this function is immediately called. So I'm defining a function using a function expression and immediately I'm calling this function. So I will only get the result of the execution of the function and the function will be forgotten immediately after being called. So I can only call it once. Um, we won't uh, use this method explicitly, hmm? uh, but it's the basis of information hiding in JavaScript. Basically, it's the method by which modules, uh, and we saw modules after the classes, uh, work uh, in JavaScript by creating one big function that defines everything that is needed and decides what to return so what should be visible outside this uh, module? Functions are basically used for scoping variables, scoping uh, um, objects, uh, declarations, uh, and so on, so that are, they are not visible from outside the function. So we are not using this syntax explicitly. We will recall it when we deal with, the, uh, with modules because this is the mechanism that is used in JavaScript for modules. You, can, you may remember that one of the first sentences that we said about JavaScript is that one program equal one file and so how can i have different files to contribute uh, to, uh, as modules to a, a, a single program well this will be the, the mechanism for that hmm? uh, and this it's a it has a strange name it's called the immediately invoked function expression so a function expression that is declared here and called immediately hmm? you cannot it call a second time because the function is not there anymore uh, and so you can also do that uh, for creating objects, but at this point, these objects will only uh, survive once, basically. So every time you call the function, you can only call the function once here, create this object C, and then use this object C, but you cannot create a second counter C2, for example, from the same function. Uh, another uh, syntax uh, that may makes these things uh, easier is uh, uh, the constructor functions. It was also mentioned in the exercise that we are going to see in a moment. Um, a constructor function is just a function that has been designed in our mind for creating a new object. So like uh, before, uh, this is our example, main example, we are creating and returning a new object with some properties. This pattern is so common that it has a special syntax for it where uh, this function will be called a constructor function 
and will be called with a special keyword new and this object that we are creating returning as a special name this hmm? uh, and these are already managed by the language so basically what we are saying is that we can create a new object using a constructor function a constructor function by convention should have a, cap a capital letter this is only an internal convention and must be called with new okay you must use the new keyword for calling a function it's not a new class it's a new function there are no classes yet here in javascript i'm calling a function with a new keyword and so i'm telling the function please create a new object the function will create a new empty object it will call it this like you know like as you wrote here this is an empty object and then you can start populating this object with uh, uh, properties or with methods or with data properties or with function methods uh, functional properties okay which are so-called sort of methods okay and uh, um, so uh, this is a shortcut from what we had before we can have one, one function building an object and returning you know there is no return the return is implicit implicit hmm. um, and so we are actually uh, uh, instead of remember these slides here we created an object that didn't have a name here uh, in the case of constructor functions uh, the name of the object that has been just created is called uh, this this is just an internal name we will see other uses of the, this keyword which is very complex and powerful in javascript for this moment this is just the name of the object that has been implicitly created so in a way a constructor function does two instructions for you one it creates an empty object and second it returns this this empty object two to the color here okay so it's a simpler way rather than to create an object ourselves and so on and so we can create it uh, property by property adding all the properties that we want uh, just by assigning like we would do with any other uh, object uh, the guarantee that we have is that every time we call a new operator with a construction fu a constructor function we will get a new object a new object a new this object that we can populate every time with a different value um, uh, okay a couple of questions in the chat andrea is asking uh, um, how would you do organize all the code in a single file actually we, we we don't okay so there are mechanisms for the dividing the program in several files and these mechanisms are called the modules but basically the interpreter sees everything as a one single stream and we can organize them and import across different files okay uh, but it's a bit strange because it's something that came after the definition of the language so it's more a property of the runtime environment uh, rather than of the language itself but we'll, we'll get there when we talk about modules in a couple of weeks uh, Alfredo, I don't know if you still have some uh, um, question about this uh, or what we saw with this example is enough. And we see um, immediately uh, we see immediately how to um, how to apply this in, in the exercise. Um, available side is it is it equivalent to writing car? It's a function model here uh yes no 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 not in this case because uh what well, you mean semantically it would be equivalent to write a, a function like that of course you are forgetting the is new uh property that should be defined also in the object yes um the difference is that the function that you wrote in the chat uh must must not be called with the new keyword because you are creating your own object. Yeah. When I'm building a constructor function, I use new and the object is created for me. Uh, in this case, you are creating, when you are opening the, the, the brace, uh, you are uh, uh, defining the new object. 
but uh, the, 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 the concept is the same. I'm creating an object with some properties. Remember that some properties may also be functional properties like the one, this one, so they are methods actually. Um, okay, so maybe let's see it in practice so uh, it could be clear. Okay, for example, um, for example, uh, let's take uh, exercise number three that we had here. Okay, where uh, saying, okay, let's create a program to manage your scores uh, at the university, and so try to use uh, JavaScript objects. Uh, hmm? and using uh, constructor functions uh, to create exams uh, and list of exams right we are not going to uh, write all the methods here because for some of them a functional implementation would be better so we'll delay it uh, in the next hour but uh, uh, at least to to see how this uh, creation of object can be done just with the construction constructor function okay uh, so let's let's take uh, our code and uh, call the exercise uh, courses and scores okay so let's open a file courses and scores okay yes okay uh use strict just to remember and then we want to define uh, uh, an object called exam with some property See an exam has some um, the code, uh, some name, uh, some credits, uh, some score, and some and the date. Okay, uh, so we can define a new function uh, exam that will take this parameter code uh, name, a few credits, uh, score. Uh, a boolean for the, the honors okay, so the score is a number score between 18 and 30 plus a bool also plus a boolean for the honors and uh, uh, finally a date date passed and that's in which you pass the exam so uh, it's very easy because we are creating a new object with all of these uh, properties inside. And so we can just populate uh, this code equal to code, this name equal to name, these uh, credits uh, equal to uh, CFU, and so on. Score. Is honors equal to honors? And this dot date test equal to date test. Okay, so uh, with this function, there is no check here. Usually, you, you, we, we could do some additional checks. For example, if the CFU is an empty integer numbers, honors should be true only if the score is 30. And so on. So before creating the object, we could do some additional checks. But apart from that, we have uh, the function that is able to create this new object, um, and we can use it just to create, uh, for example, an, an object like the exam of uh, Web Application One would be a new object created by the function exam. So we don't say object of type exam. There are no classes here. An object created by the function exam. And uh, um, we pass all the parameters. So 0, 1, what's the, what is it? F, Y, S. I, I, I always forget about the code of this course. But anyway, web applications 1. Then the CFUs are six, uh, and uh, the score uh, you got uh, 28. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, there's no honors uh, with 28. Uh, and the date passed, uh, we could write uh, a string for the moment, and we'll have uh, a moment to think about how to represent dates. But for the moment, just write a string 2021, uh, for example, uh, uh, 10th of, of February or whatever. Okay. So 
this could be a way uh, of uh, handling objects we can see then solve the blog exam of web application one and we see how it how it works hmm? so let's try to run this code and uh, we see that the console uh, logged an object you see that we have the, the representation for an object but also a, a, a tag before called exam which just the object remembers how it was created so we can also compare the different types of objects. this is called the prototype of the object and it's a co very complex topic uh maybe we can we will say something about that but not too much because it's an internal mechanism for handling uh, objects uh, there's a, a strange things strange, strange behavior that we have here in uh, visual studio code it's a bug uh, what we, what, sometime you, you see that when you see something in the console and you open it you get an error here or sometime you also get a message like cancel something like that i i, I think that if i Try to print it twice and run it. Okay, you get this cancelled error. There's nothing wrong with your program. The problem is that the your JavaScript code is uh, finished very quickly, and so the debugger cannot get uh, the result uh, from the code, and it gives these strange errors that you you don't know what they mean. Okay. The solution once and you see that if you just run the program in the terminal with node uh, courses score it will print it fine both of them without any errors so there are no errors there's, there's a different behavior the problem is that the debugger expects the code to be still running in order to get the variables one trick to do that is to add a, a, a last statement called debugger Debugger a special statement in JavaScript that will stop the code, but without um, you know closing the program, and so that the debugger may have control over your code. So if I run again with F5, which is the normal key for starting the program, select node, and the program runs up to this point, you see the debugger is stopped here. At this line without putting a breakpoint just by it's an implicit breakpoint sort of and you see that you can expand and examine what has been printed in the console and also you have uh, all the uh, variables uh, that you can uh, you see exam is a function what uh, wa1 is an object of type exam with these properties and so on so you can expect that if you want to develop with the Visual Studio Code, uh, it's better to add uh, to get the habit of adding this instruction at the end, so that you can see all your code also when the program is finished. Hmm? Um, so, so this explains also the problem that some of you may have seen. And at the end, you and you want to stop everything and just uh, exit from the debugger uh, after the the, fin the the end of the program. Hmm? It's a uh, uh, they changed the JavaScript behavior in Visual Studio Code last year, and they put a very um, no, more powerful debugger. But uh, right now, there are still these quirks uh, that needs to be worked, out, worked around. Hmm? So it's not your fault. OK, so we created an object. And so we, we should also uh, be able to create uh, the list of exams. Huh? The, the second part of the exercise is uh, ask us to create uh, an exam list. So we apply the same pattern. The exam list will be a function exam list uh, that doesn't need to have any any property it's just an empty exam list uh, and we can uh, store in this exam list what uh, what we want to manage so for example that we uh, uh, the exams Okay, is to be an empty list. Sorry. And then, uh, so we can st have store a list of objects of type exam instead uh, um, of um, 
uh, yeah, just a list of objects. They, I, we will add one at a time. So for adding a, an exam, for example, one of the methods that we should provide to this object is a method add that should be able to add a new exam to the list. So I'm defining the method add as a new function that takes an exam and and uh, executes a code for adding a new exam to the list. So in this case, it would be this dot exam dot push exams dot push of exam. Okay, so what we are saying is that when we create a new exam list, what we get is a list that is initially empty. And also this list has some methods, some function properties. One of them is add that will take an exam and add it to the list and so on. So we can create a list of exams. Uh, let's create a second one which is different. Uh, Databases, for example, zero, I don't know, ABC, data science, stuff. It's eight credits, uh, 25, uh, and uh, the day after. Okay, for that. And so we can, at this point, uh, uh, create the second object, we create the exam list my exams is a uh, um, new exam list. And in my exams, I may add the web applications one exam, and I can add the database exam. And let's see what happens in the debugger. Let's run it. And we see that, let's make it wider. We have the my exams, which is an object that contains a, a method called add, add which is a function. And uh, exams which is a list of two elements that are exam zero and exam one of length two so this object my exams contains an array and a function an array called exams and a function called f uh, sorry a function called add so we created this we created an object and we called some functions over that object um a couple of questions mattia is asking uh, uh, what the debugger is a special uh, javascript statement that is only interpreted in a in a debugging uh, environment so if you are running inside the debugger it's uh, it will trigger breakpoint if you are running uh, uh, on the on a terminal so you're trying to run this like this uh, the debugger statement is just ignored okay because it will try to trigger a debugger that doesn't exist. Um, Julio, why are we using this? Uh, we are using this uh, as a shortcut because in uh, constructor functions, so functions called with a new keyword, like this tree, the the new keyword will will already create an empty object for us. And so we can refer to this object this and populate it with the property that we want. So whenever this function is called, the, the exam function is called, uh, it uh, um, starts with an empty object called this and we can add properties to that. Okay. And, and this object is returned by the new. You see, you don't need to have any explicit return. It's just a shortcut. Okay. You don't need to remember to create an object or remember to, to return it. The, the new keyword already does every, uh, all of this. New and this is the couple that work together. In function exam list, can we omit the list that this? Uh, 
No, you can. We cannot uh, omit uh, because if we do that like this, you mean in this point, uh, we are creating a local variable inside the function. Uh, okay, this local variable uh, it could be like this probably. Let me try. Okay, and so this variable will still be accessible through a closure by these uh, properties. It should it should work. Let me try it. I'm not so sure. Uh, the exam list. Uh, what is that? So my exams. Uh, you see, it doesn't have. Uh, you don't see. Okay, we don't see the property uh, in the object anymore. Okay, so the property will only be in the uh you cannot see it in the debugger because it's uh, in the in the closure of the function hmm. but you should be able to to see them um but it's better any uh, so it, it will be possible so we are using closures like we learned uh, last week uh, but we are losing the the possibility of uh, you know referring easily to that element because it, it, it will then become private uh, to this uh, uh, to these methods okay uh, we also see that it will be a problem if this method uh, is defined outside the function it, we, it will get more complex okay uh, we are not forced uh, since we can add the property after the function has been defined uh, also outside the function then the closure mechanism is not so is not is not working everywhere so I would prefer to have this example as an explicit property of uh, of the of the object being created. So it goes with the um, with the object. It's a different choice uh, whether the uh, list is a property of the edge of the object being created or is just a closure of one of, one or more of the methods. Um, Marco, you are asking. Uh, a, a question that is more complex than you think uh, and I don't want to sorry, spend too much time but I have to answer to you so let's run it and have a look you're saying is the type of the exams exam or object hmm? so what am I doing here why aren't you running start with the backing node ah there's an error here Okay, sorry. This let is not because it was it's automatically defined. I don't need to define it with let. Okay. So what is exams? Uh, it's an object of type exam here. Uh, it will tell us that uh, it derives from an object. You see this field proto. We will discuss about prototypes uh, I mentioned. Uh, so a, a prototype chain tells me where the objects come from and where they inherit the properties. I'm making a long, a long story short here. And uh, the prototype of the object remembers that the constructor of this object was exam. So it remembers that it is an object that was constructed by this function. And uh, uh, on top of it, uh, the const this function was, was constructed by the main object element. So there's a chain of prototype, one nested inside the other, that are properties that link the objects, every object to its own creator. If, I, we, if we are using a creator function, the object remembers the creator function. It's of type object to be consistent the type of the object is object but it remembers the creator it doesn't become an exam exam is not a type it's just a function okay so we cannot say that uh, we are we still are thinking in terms of classes and types here we should think in terms of properties right um Why don't we use uh, what if we use a normal list? So Carlo is asking. Uh, sorry, sorry, Vincenzo. When we use const, what are the advantages for using const? Is that we don't 
by mistake change my exams uh, and point it to something else. Okay, this will be forbidden because my exams is declared at const. So this object, the, the reference to this object is bound to the value that I assigned it first. So it's, it, unless you're using a variable that you plan to change many times, uh, it's better to declare that as const uh, so you don't uh, reuse the same variable for different purposes, for example, okay? Um, by the way, we are, it's the reference, the variable, which is bound by the const, not the object. In, in fact, we are modifying the object more than once and it's perfectly legal. The object is not constant. The reference to the object is constant. We cannot play with that uh, anymore, okay? Um, uh, Roberto, should we define every object with const? Uh, some people say so. Some people tell us, uh, uh, suggest that we use const everywhere except when really needed. At that point, we'll use that. But it's one, one possible point of view, okay? There's let and const are exactly the same except for this uh, uh, impossibility to redefine the reference. In fact, if I try to run this right now, I will get probably, so where am I? What's wrong here? Okay, let's try with the terminal. You see that there's an error of assignment to a constant variable here at line 30. The strange thing is that if we run the program, the terminal many times, we get more clear errors than in the debugger because in the debugger some many times uh, you, you don't get uh, the the messages because the program crashes before so there's not there's some problems with the debugger here in uh, in vs code for the moment in this current version so in the terminal we see at least the real reason why the program crashed in the debugger we just see it uh, crash um <clears throat> so uh yeah um carlo and muhammad uh, just reply to each other saying okay if we if we don't use this uh, for storing the list, uh, the list is not returned as part of the object, is only hidden as part of the closure. If we want it or not, but it's not uh, normal practice, okay? Unless we really want to hide it for some reason. Uh, Gabriele is saying, okay, but uh, VS Code is able to uh, translate uh, um, a function, a creator function into, into a class. Okay, yes, this is the new syntax, basically. A class decoration is much sem semantically is more or less the same as the as a, fun, a constructor function. There is there is some syntax simplification. Like I said uh, uh, twenty minutes ago, uh, there are three simple syntaxes to what we did last week. One was the immediately executed function express, function expression. The second was constructor functions that we are playing with, and the third one would be class creation. So it's the third level of uh, simplified syntax over the same basic concept, returning an object with functional properties. Hmm? Um, so basically there are some slight differences, but 99% of the semantics is the same. Hmm? Okay. Chumbiao um, is asking uh, the question about uh, add. Um, just forgive me for a second, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, this extended push in this case, can we use this and add to replace this dot add? Uh, so we had here this exam does push the exam. I'm not sure what you mean about uh, this dot exam dot add to replace this dot add from from outside. You mean? So we are defining here. What we are doing here is that we are defining a property called add, and this property is a function. 
this function does whatever it wants. In particular, it will add then something to this uh, element. So, but this is a property of the newly created object. And so we can call the add method over the object that we just created. Okay. We cannot have access. Uh, okay. Maybe uh, I understand what you wanted to say. My exams uh, dot uh, exams uh, dot push. We can do that if you want. Okay. Um, and uh, it's possible because there is no notion of protected properties or private properties in JavaScript. So uh, unfortunately, you cannot hide the internal structure. Okay, there are mechanisms to hide them, but it's just uh, uh, conventions, basically. So many people uh, try, maybe had an underscore there, saying, okay, this is a private property, don't read that, or something like that. But really, there's no real mechanism for avoiding me to do that. Basically, I know that an object has some interface. I will try to use the interface methods instead of mangling directly with the with the method. So this is possible, but uh, not recommended. It's playing against the rules, basically. Um, Console.log, uh, Claudio is asking, the add function is not shown, but this is just a prop, um, a be the behavior of the console.log that tries only to print the property that thinks they are interesting. It's also adding a lot of proto, uh, for example, the proto is not shown in the console.log and so on. So the, the console.log only shows some properties and omits the one that doesn't feel, think uh, they are interesting, but they are there and they are not hidden. It's just a choice of the console not to show them. Uh, making my exams iterable, uh, you add the next object, a, net a next method, for example, and you, could, uh, you, you can create a new iterator object uh, for doing that. Yes, you, we can add, uh, you can, we can use most of the uh, object oriented design patterns here, okay? But uh, um, before making it more complex, let's see what other functions should be able to, to implement here. So finding a course, uh, finding uh, with, with, a, with a given course code or with a given date, date um, value or returning a race by uh, increasing or decreasing date and score and so on. Okay, the easiest one is the average one, okay? Um, we can, of course, implement all of these with uh, loops uh, over the, the list, hmm? by looping over the list to find the element and so on. But we can also use this ex exercise to learn some better, you know, uh, functional way of uh, navigating and manipulating the lists. Okay. So, uh, and also for iteration. Okay. So, partially also to answer to Carlos' question about iteration. So the add method is quite simple. And for the other methods, uh, let me open a parenthesis and see some more information uh, about uh, uh, JavaScript. So let's, let's keep this, the, 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 the rest of the exercise for later on. And uh, let's move on to have a look uh, at the chapter that we called asynchronous programming in JavaScript which is really a long sequence of steps, okay? We will walk these steps together. We start, uh, we are starting from a basic notion of objects and callbacks. This is where we are now. Sorry, objects and closures, okay? This is where we are now. And we'll see how these concepts become more and more complex. First, in uh, um, by defining a synchronous programming style in JavaScript, which is very common. Many functions uh, or many behaviors are described using callbacks. So functions that can be passed around and called using the mechanisms of, uh, of course, uh, uh, closures and, and, uh, and functional expression that we saw. So we are building on top of what we learned up to now. And also the functional programming style also stem from this. And then we will go the next step 
of doing all of this in an asynchronous way. Okay, so without waiting for the response to a function to continue the execution, so that this function will complete in time asynchronously with respect to something else. And we'll see how this applies. For example, or I would say every library in JavaScript uses callbacks and asynchronous methods. So this is the normal way. Uh, it's a bit strange at the beginning because we see the, the code written in the reverse way with compared with the other programming languages. But we get used to that, okay? Let's build that one step by step. So the easiest one are callbacks, which is just nothing really new. A callback is a function. Uh, it's a basically a callback function is a function, nothing more than a normal function that is passed into another function as an argument. So for example, I have a function here, create quote, that gets two arguments. One is a string and the second is a function. It's expected to be a function, right? Uh, inside, the, 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 the body of this function, I can call, like quote is a string, I can change it and can, I can use its values. Oh, no, I cannot change it, sorry. Strings are immutable. I can use its value for something else. And since this is a function, I can call the function. I just need to put some parentheses and then call in the function. So I'm calling a function that I don't know which function it is. I only know that they gave me this name of a function, this reference to a function, I can call it for something else. And uh, so when I create this function, when I call so this external function, create quote, I see that I'm providing two parameters. One is the, uh, the a string literal, and the second is a name of the function. In this case, the, fun the function log quote has been uh, declared uh, as a, uh, as a regular function, okay, with the, the first syntax, the classical syntax. But I could also write here uh, a normal, a narrow function like, like that, no? a narrow function, and then write the console.log uh, of, uh, uh, yes, S of, of the string S, for example. Any way of declaring a function is equivalent. So I can write, uh, uh, create a function and uh, assign it to a variable and pass it as a parameter. So I can pass the name of a function that already exists, or I can create a, a new arrow function on the fly, a functional expression. Nothing, nothing changes. So like uh, you know it is just a step further before we were using function expression as properties of objects okay the next step here is we are using function expressions as uh, um, parameters of functions arguments in function calls and so the call function can call my function when it wants so what happens here is actually that the create quote uh, calls this function, uh, sorry, log, what happened to my pen? Go away. Uh, it calls actually the function my qu log quote and it will print to the console this quotation. But if I wanted to log uh, not on the console, but somewhere else, for example, into a database or into a web page or whatever, I would change this function say, okay, I use the create quote that does the formatting and they pass use a function to do the printing. So I don't want the string back. I give you a string, do the formatting and do the printing. The formatting is your job and the printing is a job for a function that I'm providing you to complete your work. Mm -hmm. uh, can we pass more than one function? Uh, of course you, we can and we will. Um, they are just parameters, okay? The, they happen to be functions. Uh, if I write two different functions, uh, the callback, which one will call, uh, you see that the, sorry, let me erase it so that it's clear. Um, the actual code, these are, these are just definition. The actual code running, 
the runnable code is this this one okay so i'm calling create quote by sending this callback log quote log quote becomes callback and will be called okay so if i'm defining another function uh, of course i will have to change the name that they, that they pass here so every time i call the function i provide the callback function to be called okay can we do it because functions are basically normal objects yes hmm? there's nothing special about function they're just uh, instead of uh, with the dot uh, for extracting properties uh, you, have, you use the parentheses to to call in the function but nothing special about that um it's uh, it's not it's just challenging our way of thinking uh so these are used very often for example in sorting sorting an array uh, you can uh, use um, the sort method which is very let me make you an example uh, let's open a file uh, sorting Okay, use strict and uh, let's define an array of numbers which are uh, 3, 4, 88, 12, 9, 17, I don't know. Okay, so we could sort a, a dot sort and print a before and after okay this is a normal sort method for arrays we can run it not sorting and uh, we get the result here sorry down here So do you think, do you see anything strange here? The sort order is not what we expect, okay? So the sort method uh, sorts an array with the default uh, sorting criteria, which is by strings. So it compares uh, strings. So it first convert. These are numbers, but they are first converted to strings, and then they are compared. And you see that okay, there are twelve becomes before three because one is before three in the alphabetical order. Okay, so it is sorted, but it's sorted as uh, an array of strings. If we want it, so just uh, I'm telling you because this is a very common error in JavaScript, expecting sort to behave normally. Uh, to compare numbers with numbers. No, it doesn't. It compares strings with strings. You can, of course, uh, uh, change, uh, uh, specify uh, the methods uh, that you want to use for sorting, for comparison. Okay. Since the default one is not good, you can uh, send a comparison, a compare function as a parameter to sort. Okay. And so the description here is uh, uh, a, a, a function that takes two arguments and returns a number. And this number should be positive, negative, or, or, or zero, depending on whether A should be to be considered before, after, or equal to B. So the sort function needs to know what is the criterion for sorting. And so this is provided as a callback. Uh, so in this case, we have a one parameter where A and B can be compared and we return A minus B because in this case it's negative if, if A is smaller and positive if B is larger. And the minus only works with numbers. So we are sure that the, the operation is done between numbers and numbers. So uh, you were calling what, uh, why are callbacks useful? Because we are modifying the behavior of the sort function by providing a smaller function that can be used inside the sorting to customize it, for example, to do one step in a way that we like. Okay, so for example, if I run it now, I say run, now it happens to be 
in the right order. Um, uh, no, it doesn't parse to numbers. They are already numbers. So in this case, they are already numbers. Okay. Uh, if they were strings, uh, probably this minus would try to convert them to numbers. But in this case, there are no conversions here because they are already numbers. I'm treating them like numbers. If I want to sort in the reverse order, no problem. I just uh, reverse the, the difference here. So I'm providing a different callback that will yield a different result. So this is the normal mechanism. Um, a and B, okay, what are A and B hmm? here? Sorry for the confusion, I called everything with the same name. Let's call it X and Y, because A is already na the name of the array. And so it's confusing, sorry. So this is a callback function that will be called whenever sort wants to know if x should be should, should come before or after y so imagine your bubble sort or quick, or quick sort or whatever you are doing some comparison between couple of elements within pairs of elements and uh, the sort function doesn't know how to compare them but it gets one parameter which is a function every time it needs to um, compare the two elements it will call this function so Call this function with the what parameters? With the two elements that they want to, that it needs to compare. So X and Y would be probably four and 12, or X and Y will be nine and three. Every time the function is called, sort will call them with a different set of parameters, different values for X and Y every time. Okay, we don't know how many times the function is called, uh, depending on the sort algorithm. If you are use the in C, for example, the quick sort library function, Q, Q sort, the, the, that function wanted a pointer to a comparison function, you remember. Uh, so you had to create a function and pass a pointer with all the types of problems. Or in Java, you do the same with the, um, by defining a comparator class. So an instance of a comparator class that only has one function. Or you do a lambda, or also in um, in Python, you would do a lambda as a parameter to a sort function. Okay, uh, and the same is here. We don't need anything fancy as classes or lambdas. We just have a function to be called. The function that we provide must have the right number of parameters. So Carlo is telling us this function should have two parameters. Yes, in the documentation, is is shown here that the callback function has two parameters that they call a and b. And so we need to provide the function with two parameters. Okay. Otherwise, they would be treated as undefined and probably we will get some error. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, Giovanni, I didn't miss your question, but I was waiting for the moment to reply. Um, typing is uh, dynamic. No, no problem. Uh, in, in JavaScript. So usually when you write something you don't know the type of it you don't know whether x is a number or a string or a function why not okay uh, it's uh, the moment in which you are using it that makes the difference so when i'm in this case for example uh, the callback parameter should be a function otherwise trying to call it would create an error, would generate an exception. When I define the function here, there is no way of telling that quote should be a string and callback should be a function. It's not part of the of JavaScript. If you want to provide the type description, use TypeScript instead of JavaScript, which is an extension with explicit types. Okay. But in JavaScript, parameters may be anything. Depends on you should know what these parameters are for and how to use them as a consequence. So in this case, you are calling this parameter as a function. So it, you should you expect that this value, that the value that, it, that they, are, they are passing to you will be a function. Um, OK. So. Uh, 
Carl is saying that something is tricky. I don't know what you're referring to exactly, but it's all tricky, really. It, no, it, it requires us to think in more general terms. Um, so uh, let, maybe we can clarify it by seeing some other examples, not just the sort function um or, or where callback are used because they are really everywhere once we start <laughs> seeing them you see that they are every, everywhere okay uh julio is not the same type of the function that you say because uh, um the sort function read the description is expected to return a negative value or zero or a positive value we are is not required to return the larger of the two elements what you are saying in your comment is uh, i'm returning the maximum of x and y no i need to return minus something zero or plus something depending on x is before or after y hmm? so it's a uh, it's it's a different uh, function type of function okay um Okay, let's uh, let's see some examples where these callback methods are used a lot, and what we call the functional programming. Okay, and then we will also start to write some of our own callbacks. Um, functional programming is a method of, of, of programming, basically, that uh, uh, tries to use uh, uh, functions for processing data streams instead of just iterating with loops. So imagine you have an array and you want to extract a subset of this array for maybe only the elements that are that fit some criteria. Okay. So basically what you would, what you would do is create an empty array, uh, iterate over the initial list of elements. And if any element matches the criteria, I will add it to the final array. This is what we do in other programming language, for example, in a, uh, in a with a functional approach, I would do the reverse. I would call a method that we call filter, and the method with would uh, want a function, a callback function, to check whether an element is fit to survive or not. So every time we call uh, sorry the filter function will examine the elements one by one for each element it will call the filter function and if if the element is uh, fit for by its is uh, returns true basically to the criteria then it will be added to the to the new array otherwise it will be ignored so in a, in this way we can have only one filtering algorithm that will work for any filtering criteria. If we want to change the filtering criteria, we just have to pass a different callback. But the filtering algorithm is the same, will be the same. Here, imagine if you are trying to change the, the filtering criteria, you need to cut and pay, copy and paste this code and change what is the criteria in here. So it's not reusable much, very much, okay? Um, I'm talking about uh, the filtering algorithm uh, and uh, Marco is, is getting my point by saying, but in a way you are making a loop. Not really. Hmm? Not really because uh, in this functional programming uh, came out when we started to do parallel computing. So being able to express data manipulation primitives like filtering, mapping, and so on at a higher level of of, uh, of, um, of representation, so that they could be they could be parallelized better. Here, there's nothing against uh, running. I have a thousand elements uh, running five hundred uh, filters on one CPU and the other five hundred on the other CPU in parallel. Because in this case, the semantics filter is each element decides independently from the other whether it's part of the result or not. So this filtering, these comparison operations can be parallelized. 
Here, you can do that with a clever and parallel filtering algorithm. In the, in the for loop, you cannot parallelize anything because it's sequential, brutally sequential, okay? So we get advantages if, if we think at a higher level. And of course, in some cases, they will be the same. It will be just easier to write. But in some cases, it could also be more efficient because this opportunity you know, for, for better algorithms, search algorithms, filter algorithms, and so on. And so there are basically, um, Okay, three primitives, uh, let's make a long story short, uh, uh, that uh, support uh, uh, functional programming with arrays, with, uh, yes, with arrays in, in JavaScript. Um, there's a for each method, there's a filter method, exactly uh, like we had before. And there is a map, which is very, very pow powerful and uh, uh, also some boolean expression okay uh, da, do all the elements uh, respect a, um, a property or do at least one element respect a property you don't have, you don't need to have the loop with the flags and so on uh, everything will be already uh, computed like this so me, we may have a look uh, um, at, at, more, at the most important one in the context of our exercise. Okay, so we will learn how to use, how to build them and how to use them. Okay, uh, Andrea, is this method is used to perform a general operation independently of the nature of the yes? This is another way. Uh, functional programming is uh, uh, more polymorphic than normal programming because just you uh, you de define an algorithm that operates on a data structure with a given function and only the data structure and the function know about the data. So it's inherently polymorphic because it can adapt uh, dynamically to different types of data structures. Yes, it's all like that. Mm -hmm. um, Lorenzo, do we have a lazy evaluation in JavaScript? Sorry. Um, we have... Uh, Lazy, oh, depends. Lazy evaluation for booleans, uh, yes, because it's short, it's short uh, shortcuts. Uh, in these uh, uh, primitives for the array, no, it's not like uh, in streams in Java, for example, in the Java streams library, uh, or in uh, um, with Python core routings, for example, you are generating the elements one by one. Not here, we are working on arrays for the moment. Okay, you can do, of course, with other data structures, you can do that. But right now we are just arrays, and so an array is already defined at the beginning. You, you, you are not building it one uh, piece by piece. Um, but the, the methods can be extended, of course, to other data structure. Right now we start from from easy ones. So, for example, let's go back to our exercise. Uh, if I find it again, it should be there on some PowerPoint. Uh, not here. Not here, sorry. Where are you? The exercise. Okay, closed it. But it's easy to open it again. Okay. So, for example, uh, find. Hmm? Uh, the find method could return the matching sum so one possibility is to use uh, uh, the filter method of the array in order for us to find a given element with a property with a given property so what does the filter method tell us so let's use the, the definition of, of the easiest one filter <clears throat> giving uh, an array, the filter method takes a, a Boolean function, so a function that will return a Boolean value, and it will return a new array with only those elements who match the criteria. Okay, so where the function, so the function will be called on all the elements with five, x equal to five, then x equal to four, then to three, then to two, and so on. And every time we check the property, and if the property is true, we get the element, we keep the element. If the property is false, we drop the element, we, we ignore it. Uh, we are building a new array, so the original one is never touched, but uh, 
the only uh, it will survive. Only the, uh, those will survive. And so in our case, in our case, we had the scores. We wanted to uh, filter with a given score, right? Uh, find course code. So I want to implement a find method, a method where I have a course code as a parameter, and they want to return the course object that matches. Okay, so I could do a for loop, of course, of all the exams and find the ones that uh, uh, match. I can do that also with functional programming. I take the list of exams. I filter this list. And I want, uh, as a result, only those uh, exams that match the criteria where the exam dot code is equal to course code. And this will return a new array result. Okay. So I'm starting from an array. I'm applying the filter operator of this array. It will return me a subset of the original elements. A new array with a subset of the original elements, only those that return true to this condition. So every at every iteration of every element, this function will be called. And if true, the element will survive, otherwise not. It may happen that in this case, the result is empty. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, it should contain only one element. Um, I, um, so we must save the result somewhere with const or let or whatever you want, uh, because we are not, the filter will return an array. So if I don't save it somewhere, the, the, the result will be, will be lost, of course. So we could return not the result, but maybe the result of zero, because the caller expects one exam to be returned. And the result is an array. Filter will always return an array. And so I need to take only the first element of the array, uh, if there is only one. OK, so I could also check if the result dot length is one good otherwise uh, return undefined for example or generate an exception so in this case sorry, uh, so because the filter could return one element more elements not in this case because we are checking for inequality so if there is no there are no exam with the same code there, there's no risk, uh, or could be returned zero elements. So in this case, uh, it would generate an exception if I'm trying to access an element which is not there. So I check it before. Um, okay. What is the difference between equal and triple equal? The difference is that uh, the double equal uh, tries to convert the data types and then do the comparison. While the triple equal does just the comparison and if the data types don't match, uh, the comparison will be false. So in this case, there are strings against strings. Usually they should be strings. Uh, so uh, they, I don't need uh, uh, the JavaScript to try to do type conversions before uh, equality check. So normally it's uh, another suggestion is uh, try to use triple equal unless you really want uh, JavaScript to try some type conversions before doing the comparison. Like, like const versus let. It's more uh, safe, it's safer actually uh, if you use triple equals because you don't have an unexpected type conversion. And if you want type conversion, you can do that, you just drop on it. So they get the habit of using three equals instead of two. 
um, how does it know x the, the question for uh, for salem again this is the art the art part x is the parameter that will be passed to this function by filter filter is a predefined function that uh, works on my array and calls my callback function many many times every time the function is called with one different value which corresponds to one element of the array and this is the parameter of the function so it's a it's an input uh to my callback function is the parameter to my callback function okay so i'm calling x because it remembers it reminds me that this should be an exam of type object but it's such just uh, the um, the formal parameter of the function the name of the parameter that my function gets and the value will be assigned by filter why when it will call my function okay so it's actually something that they get as input here this is the hard part of getting, of course, because I'm writing here a function that will be called by someone else with some values. Hmm? Um, can we use the notation or instead of the if? Yes, yes, if you want. Um, so in this case, it would be return uh, something like uh, return. Uh, for example, like a result. Uh, no, I don't like it because uh, like like that. Okay, it works because it returns uh, if result is uh, no, it's an end. If result is false, it returns a result. And if it's true, it returns a result of zero. The problem is that in this case, it will return not undefined, but it will return um, the empty array. Because remember that the empty array is a false fee value. And so I don't like this exam list to return the empty array when the caller expects an object of type um, exam hmm? but these are of course uh, how you want to define exactly uh, the, the the return value hmm? the problem with this, with these shortcut operators that they, they will always returns one of the operands hmm? so if if the value that you have is okay good but the problem is that the result is not undefined here but it's the empty array because filtering with that condition, which is always false, that is not undefined. It's not an error. It's just an, an empty result. Okay. The problem is that we don't want the, the empty result because our method find express only exactly one result. There was also a question of uh, what happens if I have more than one. I cannot because I'm I'm filtering over the code of a course, and there cannot be two courses with the same code. So by definition, by construction, my list of exams should never have two courses with the same code. That's why I'm checking with the equality with one, maybe triple equal if I want, but, um, and not uh, greater than or an equal. Um, so the filter function, it's already there it's already defined for the arrays right? for every array we could also want if you want you can also implement something like that uh, for for exercise uh, we can do that maybe uh, in, in separate file just for checking okay um, what is the suggested approach between using uh, this dot find uh, versus using closures and writing something like return find or well, I would prefer this uh, uh, method because it's more structured because I, I don't need to put everything into the braces of an object uh, I have several statements uh, and by the way I could also have some of these defined outside the function body I can reuse some functions that are already in, in other objects uh, so this is more general uh, method rather than the method that we used uh, last week okay so the concept is the same, but this syntax is, is more flexible. Um, 
concerning the the filtering function is not uh, is not it's not complex it's not magic okay i i could define my own filter function uh, let's define for example a function my filter uh, over an array and uh, with a criteria I'm trying to define a, uh, to show how the callback is used. I'm not using the functional way here, but to show there's nothing magic about passing around the function. So I'm just creating uh, an, uh, an array result starting from the empty array, and then I'm iterating for all the elements of uh, element of an array, and for each of them if criteria of the element then result to push the or the element and then i return the result this is an example of a function that takes a, a filtering function that takes a, a, a callback function criteria and they can use it just to return maybe only even numbers okay i want to return only even numbers so i could uh, have uh, um, uh, an array b by filtering the array a with the criteria that every element should be an even number so x module 2 should be equal to zero The parentheses maybe it's clear so in this case if i run it i should have node sorting or i didn't save it uh, there's something for element oh sorry for let element Cost. Okay, I have uh, only I created. I call the filter function that takes an array and a callback. So I re-implemented the logic of filter. Of course, I don't need to do that, but just to show you that callbacks are nothing special. I'm doing my own filtering function that internally just uses the arrays. It's a very very st stupid algorithm. But uh, uh, it takes a function that is called many times, and every time the element is called x here, and I'm executing the body of the callback with a different value of x, of the variable x. Okay, so this function just do a part. I only have one purpose in this case: return true or false whenever when they can examine one element okay x do i want it or not yes no and so on hmm? and so it's normal to have function that get data parameters and function parameters uh, there are also other uh, the simplest uh, functional method the for each method for example where it's a pure callback your function your callback will be uh, called many times every time it will give you a different uh, argument a different uh, value a different element to to print to examine to compute or whatever and so it's a, it's an alternative to to the to a normal for loop so for example in my other example with the array of numbers just not to make it complex i want uh, to print the numbers one by line for example okay so i can write uh, um, a dot for each for each so for each takes a callback function this callback function may take up to three parameters 
the value of the element the index or the position of this element if i need and uh, the array that con the original array that contains everything or contains the, the elements and so on hmm? um so i can use just uh, one parameter the value and i want to print that value for example console.log the value so i would i will be printing the elements one by line probably if i'm not wrong yes one by line uh, because console log uh, goes to the next line every time i i'm doing something with every element i can also get the second uh, parameter which is the index i could also write uh, at position index so it's another information that can it will be passed uh, to the callback and say three is at position zero four is at position one and so on hmm? so instead of writing a for loop i just use the for each uh, with a functional callback where i only specify what needs to be done at every element and i don't have all the mechanics of the for loop because it's already inside the for each in this case for each does not return anything useful because it only does some work it doesn't return an array hmm? uh, if we write something and change the value of course if we cannot okay we cannot change the value here so let me if i do value plus plus for example or value no, let's write explicitly value plus one it will not change the array because it will change the parameter of the function so this is a parameter of my callback function and i can change my parameter but are you losing the link with the original object okay if we you really want to to change something you you need to get a third parameter which is the reference to the array and so you can do the array of index and you can increase that of course, the array of index is the same as value, but value is just a copy of the reference. And with the array, you, you could go back to the original element or maybe also the element before or the element after if you want. So that's why you are um, able, you, that's why you need the parameter. If you want to modify the array, you need to go back through the array, not through the value. Um, Okay, you can look at strings like Java, not with basic uh, arrays in JavaScript. You need to have an extra library for doing that. Okay, but nat natively is not stream light, uh, it's just sequential. Hmm? It's just a, way, a different way of writing sequential code. We are still in sequential code right now. Uh, just a quick look at the other methods, uh, and then we can have a break. Uh, every and some are very easy they just uh, manage um, flags, Boolean flags, okay? Uh, so I have, I have a, um, a condition and with every, it will check whether the condition is true for all the elements. And if yes, it will return true. If at least one element falsifies this uh, callback function, then everything will be false. So it's a, just a way of, uh, of you know, implementing the for all quantifier for an array. Is it true that this property holds for all the elements? Yes or not. And some just uh, implement the, the other, the existential quantifier. Does it exist at least one element? Do we have at least one element that uh, um, satisfies this function? Yes or no. Uh, so you don't again you can use this instead of writing a for loop right now it's just a different way of writing sequential code okay map is very very useful remember filter filter uh, creates an array which is shorter from uh, than the original array because it only selects some elements but those elements that are in filter are the same that we had in the original array 
map is the complementary. If we have an array with three elements, map will always create an array with three elements. But every element will be transformed according to the callback function. So in this case, I'm transforming every element into its square. So map will take an, an array of numbers and will return an array with the same number of number with the same length three and each element one is replaced by the square of one two is replaced by the square of two three is replaced by the square of three so we can transform an array of elements into another element another array where every element has been transformed in this case and we are computing the square in this case we are converting every letter into upper case. In other cases, we could be converting numbers to strings or um, dates to numbers or whatever, or elements uh, into messages to print, elements of an array into the message to print, uh, pretty print the message and so on. So every time you have an array and you want to create another array with corresponding values, but these values have been transformed, map is a very very powerful method. We use it a lot uh, in, in React uh, for creating, uh, you know, if you want to create a list of items, a table in your HTML page, uh, map is very, very uh, powerful just for creating all the all the code. You define the, the rule for creating one line and then you map this rule over all the elements of an array and you get a full page of items. Um, and there is also a, a, the, a, a, the last functional method, which is called reduce, sorry, um, which is a bit strange because uh, it takes an array huh, and it returns just one element, just one number, one value, let's say. No, no, they are not necessarily numbers. And for doing that, uh, it will uh, combine an accumulator with the, the first element and then you have the accumulated value they will combine with the second element and then the result will be combined with the third element and the result will be combined with the fourth element and so on until the end so it's good for doing you know for example the the, the, the sum of the elements uh, the product of the elements uh, the minimum the maximum where we can express an operation over an entire array as an operation over the summary of a part of an array plus an, an, an additional argument. So these are it's a, it's a bit more complex to understand, but basically, for example, uh, for computing the sum of the elements of an array, we just use the we can you could you reduce by saying, okay, this is the accumulator. This is the current value. The next value will be the, the so the next value of the accumulator, basically. So the next partial result will be the previous partial result plus the current value. So we are doing the computation sum equal sum plus value. And at the end, we will have the sum of all the elements. So reduce is used for uh, many cases for having one, com one value computed out of the, all the elements. Uh, uh for example the sum the product uh, the minimum the maximum can be computed easily with reduce or you can use your own uh, your old for loops uh, of course uh, that still work mm -hmm. uh okay does reduce create a new array no it, it creates a new value just one element one value mm -hmm. not an array but only one element right Okay, so these are just examples of how to create those and we, we, we can try or we can, you can try uh, to, to implement also the other parts of this, uh, um, this exercise trying to use uh, functional methods. So maybe, maybe we then compare the results uh, on, on, with our solution or you can uh, ask on Slack during the week uh, how you could how you would implement the other methods that are missing here. So average is a good candidate for, for uh, reduce. 
uh, after data is a good candidate for um, um, for again uh, uh, filtering and these two lists uh, are good candidates for uh, for um, sorting for example the list huh? they are all functional methods that apply to an array um, and uh, but now we are ready or we should be ready to do the next step so right now all the callbacks are just functions being called in a specific place but they are called like any other function I call the function, I pass the parameter, I wait for the result, and they go forward. You see here, in our simple callback, where we had a callback here, criteria is a normal function, and I will execute line 15 when line 14 is finished. So when the callback finishes, when the callback returns, so in this case, the callback was uh, this one, so first I compute this result. I finish this function, I evaluate the if, and then I do the push. So it's all normal synchronous code. Okay, it's not just procedural because it's not uh, executed uh, in the right uh, uh, order because we are calling function and so on, but it's all synchronous. So it, we don't need to understand how functions work. Or to change our of our, our understanding of our function our how functions work okay our understanding is still good the only thing that we have to do is just to remember that function can just be created on the fly and can be passed around but they are still functions and the function will run until it returns and when it returns the caller will resume execution good after the break this will no longer be true Okay, so the caller will continue before the function returns. And this creates a lot of bugs, uh, sorry, or a lot of opportunities. So let's have a break, if, you're, uh, if you agree, of uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so 6.10, it goes to six, uh, 4.25. And try to have a strong coffee because it will be a shock for you. Or for, or for all of us. Okay, see you later in 15 minutes. <laughs> 